That'd be the lead story on the lady. Good to know you love us. All right, folks, it's uh it's ten thirty. We'll be able to stay on that then we're gonna move on get started. We've got special purpose local option sales tax uh, revenue projection. Commissioners, um, I have asked Harris to provide you a breakdown and analysis of the spot uh, monies. He is going to give you an overview from 2010 to the current. He's already spoken about this a little bit, but now he's going to go into more detail. Harris? Okay, I'm going to start with the sheet that has the chart on the bottom. Um, this is mainly based, well, totally based on SPLOT 6 uh, as far as the years that are shown on here. Uh, this month, probably as of today, uh, the first funds from SPLOT 7 are coming in. I actually do this every month uh, for SPLOTs and laws and uh, send it to Joe and Stephanie with some sort of upbeat comment if I can, but it's typically, as you can see for this year, on the far right there, it's been down, 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 up one time and then down again, and you're running 4% higher or 259,000 below than last year. Um, almost all of that is related to the change in the vehicles being taken out of the sales tax. Uh, they represent, on average, 23% of sales tax revenue, and they're just gone as of April of last year. Um, and even the state in their revenue numbers they sent out, um, Paige was nice enough to send me that, and I noticed, surprisingly, they noted they were 4% down and actually said that it was due to the vehicle being taken out of the sales tax. So we're in a downside, and you can also see that you actually were in a growth pattern from FY10 to FY12. It went from 12 million to 12 million. They took those vehicles out of there and we're back to square one. We're back to FY10 and probably after a full year of this, we're going to be below FY10. So that's not good because that's at sort of the height of the recession there. So, um, so the idea of making us hold at the end of this year, we should know that picture basically as far as where we're at as far as the motor vehicle tax, but you don't perceive us actually getting there based on this. Well, and it gets, the whole legislation is very convoluted, and um, we'll see if I can try to explain it. They've redefined what was sales tax, whether it be spots or loss, into the motor vehicle tax. So, in essence, that loss amount and that spots amount, that 2% is gone as they existed. The loss is used for rollback of taxpayers, that's gone. The SPLOS is used for capital improvement. That's gone. Then they come over in your general fund and try to make you whole compared to the property taxes you used to collect on vehicles. Well, it doesn't balance out if you lost 1% of your SPLOS. They should have left that in there and maybe done the loss, but I wouldn't have. I would have left the SPLOS on the vehicles. Um, so to me, it looks to me like you're losing something. Uh, the numbers in the general fund show you're up a little bit. There's this complex formula of it going down in terms of this, how much they're going to give you back and how all that's going to work and who knows how it's going to play out. Most governments did better the first year. But I think when you're losing money over here, just to put it over there, you really are doing better. So it's like we're, we're playing with buckets of money and just moving it around. Um, and the impact is to swatch. Now, let's go to the next page. One of the things we did at our swatch meetings for the referendum is we came up with a referendum estimate. Let me emphasize estimate. Um, the total estimate was 150 million. In the meeting with all the cities and their representatives, it had on there that that estimate could be too large due to two things. 
they took uh, excise energy, I'm sorry, energy tax out during that time. We still don't know what that amounts to because you'd have to invoke an excise tax to get a measure on it. And then they also were taking out the vehicle. We had no measure at that point in time of the impact. So everybody is aware in Lowndes County and cities, they're all aware that the number could be impacted. And what I've done is gone ahead in a very conservative manner, very conservative, using the base amount since it's dropped in April, and then even taking 4% off the months that haven't occurred, because the, the 4% seems to be where it's hitting. And then that's going to be the base for the first year and even the second year with no growth. Very modest growth going out for the rest of the year. It's very, very small growth. What I'm trying to do is come in under the actual numbers. The problem we have with SPLOS 6 is we were doing great, doing great, and bam, about the second year, the recession hit. We already had the debt that had to be paid out of there, which was a large percentage. And, we, and the county had already spent some major money on road and water sewer improvements, thinking, you know, if it comes in like it has to, we'll do fine. Well, they did. Now, thank goodness we were able to continue to cut projects, move money out. Unfortunately, we had to cut Mike off for the last two years. <laughs> and, and the other Mike. <laughs> but in the end of the day, as of this month, the final bond thing is done, the general fund's been paid back and, and, and everything worked out. But it was very difficult. I don't want to go through that again. I, I hate going to people and saying, well, you had this much money, but now you only have this, so you need to cut some more. So this is a very conservative estimate. The idea being that hopefully when we put in the actual numbers, and I have worksheets for every month this spot is going to be in existence, we will eventually put in the actual numbers, and they should always hopefully come in higher than what I projected. And then that would mean we could go back to them and say, well, you have more money. We're not going to take it away. We're going to tell you you have more money. If, if we don't get there, then this economy is really in, in trouble. But as you can see, the original projection just for the Lowndes County portion was 62 million 415. My projection at this point in time is 52 million 580. So and that's basically a, almost a 10 million dollar drop. And that's a lot of duration. And that's the whole. Duration of the six years worth of splots projected to be two. Right. Harrison, do you ever get up in the morning and take happy good news <laughs> or do you always come with? Well, uh, I've been called dark Vader in another county, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm sort of I don't enjoy this, <laughs> but this economy has put us in the state legislature, for better or worse, they they can defend themselves has decided to do some things that have impacted it um, and it's just still a problem and we can put our head in the sand and hope it goes away but i think it's better to be proactive i know you mentioned this a minute ago about how now new vehicles are no longer under property tax right oh, do you have any kind of projection over as time goes on and more old vehicles are out of service and no longer under property tax, new vehicles come in and they're not being property tax. You have a way of kind of determining what uh, no, actually the state the, the state put in a system to try to track it, but it's hard to project that. That was going to be based on auto sales. And we yeah, they're going to be for Yeah, years. exactly. And the other the other thing is like the way the state's making the whole is they're looking at the prior fiscal year revenue property taxes. So every year as that goes down, they're guaranteeing you that you're going to get at least that much. But that number is going to keep falling off every year. And so it, it's a complex formula they designed. And I still think at the end of the day, so what if the general vote comes back home? You still don't have that 1% over in your spot. You've lost it. So I'm, I'm just not convinced this is going to work in the long run for county governments or for any of the governments. Um, it's good for the, maybe it's good for the taxpaying public, I, you know, I don't know. Um, but I think it's a risk Exactly. Um, you know, if they, 
like I said, I would prefer they had left the spots alone and just left it where it was. Because it's vital property tax. I mean, it's sales tax. It's yeah, it's, all, sales it's tax. all sales tax related. Um, so anyway, that is the projection. Now, the next page and is, is, is go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, one thing that this is based on the projection. Again, this is a projected number working off the history that we've, that we've seen so far in the National Service Manager. So reality is, is that that we certainly could be $10 million short on block ready. That's, that's reality. Right. Right. Um, with that, and then we're headed with it, as we move through our next six years of projecting our projects, and not as much as projections, but you can make a projection. The real concern are, are I and mean, I would caution you to on all promises you might say that you make. you got to be careful about that because you get to the end of the day and, uh, and there's more time left than there is money, more projects left than there is money. You know, we, need to be, uh, we need to be cautious, honest with the citizens out there from the standpoint that, that we may not have the revenue, but everything is going to be based on the revenue that comes in. And at the end of the day, uh, there may be a high probability that some parties won't get to work. The, the other thing I've got to mention that I did on here, the other thing that happened with Plot 6 is by the time we realized we are going to cut, that included outside agencies like Parks and Rec. So they got a significant cut of their percentage based on the amount of money coming in versus what the record would call for. To avoid that, because some of these commitments are actually based on what you said you would do for the referendum, like the public safety radio. The ones at the bottom are isolated to get 100% revenue regardless of what comes in. That means every month, this amount off to the right is gonna be allocated to them. Um, so that we don't have any cuts to those projects and those people. Now, what ideally, and what ideally will happen is if the revenues come in higher, the projects up top are going to benefit. The projects at the bottom are already covered. The projects at top should have more revenue, and that can be dispersed among them. If the projects at the bottom end up coming in below the overall total of 12 million 682, that money could be shifted back up to the top also, but we wouldn't know that until almost year six, most likely. So that, that's, that's gonna be over time. So these projects that require 100% funding, and we'll have to take the front seat over these up here like roads, streets, and bridges. And well, we, and uh, well, let me go to the next page and I'll explain how we're gonna track it. So really, and this is just a composite page really haven't finished, but it's a year by year, and it's, I know it's very time to print, but um, the top part shows the revenue stream for each project broken out. Now what we are working on, and part of the information that everybody will be going through, these three guys from SWASH, is I'm going to get the data from them so I can inlay under expenditures their projections of projects they want to do in a particular year and timing. I have it by month to month. So if they tell me, okay, this project's going to run from um, May 2014 to August 2014, I can lay those numbers in. I can also lay everybody else's numbers in. And when I say, oops, we don't have enough cash at this point in time to do that, you're going, somebody's going to move down the road and keep pushing out. The idea being, of course, we don't want to borrow from the general fund like after what happened last time. Basically, in order to keep operating the general fund, for had to loan splash money. Fortunately, you are in great shape and you're able to do that, but I prefer not to do this. This should be you know, take care of itself as we go. The only problem with that I see is that we've really delayed a lot of projects from the last splash. These guys are eager to get going, <laughs> and people are probably wanting them to get going. So we've got to let the revenue start coming in, and we got to lay it out. Now, I do find that if we work with everybody involved, usually we can get people who 
don't really have a hard press for something to move down so we can do press pressing projects and that's how we work that so we'll be i've laid it all out for six years by month each month as the actual numbers come in i'll put in the revenues and the expenditures and we'll just keep assessing where we are month to month and year to year and we'll know whether or not you know we're going to be able to do x project within a given year and i really hope that this economy is going to outpace what i put in here because it's pretty dismal as far as i can see very conservative and you have to realize that the way Harris put these projects together you start looking at something like the public safety maybe it has a fixed cost so you can't enter into a contract with them and begin that installation and say oh by the way that's not enough money coming in so we need to cut that not can you do that if you're building facilities chad can start <coughs> looking at improvements at the civic center and all of a sudden have to start cutting those back and leave something partially done can we reduce some items sure but we can't go in and build half a building we have to do a better job in our projecting and that's why harrison and all of the staff that's involved in this are going to be looking at this on a almost weekly basis of where we are uh, chad and harrison talk a lot Mike, uh, Alan, and Harrison talk a lot about where the projects are. Mike Fletcher hasn't been that close as working with Harrison on it lately, simply because he hadn't had any money to work with in the last several years. <laughs> but all three of these guys will be working very closely on every one of these projects to say, how far can we move, when can we go in, when do we need to stop. But when you start looking at road projects, as I indicated to y'all earlier, there is a timeline involved from right away acquisition, design, etc. And there is a process that if you're going to do a road, you've got to begin that road. So we've got to have some projections on what Mike's going to have, even though very conservative projections. And we may be picking up steam if this economy turns around, if we have better income, we can add to those. But initially, we're going to be going very, very slow. I've got a question on these 100 requiring 100% funding. I understand once you start a project, you got you don't have a half a building or you don't want to pay one lane of a road. But is it because that 100% funding is because it was actually listed on the referendum that we would provide courthouse? renovations for example is that is because it was specifically listed why we why is it everybody understands that anything on the splash referendums and that's why why are these pieces hundred percent funded only because why? i would prefer to have that number there if the county can do it for less that's fine that'll be money that'll that'll shift back us top that's not my question my question is why does it say project requiring 100 percent that's because that's the way i've budgeted in other words i've laid out that project to receive that one you've got to have that amount in order to complete that project it doesn't mean we're required to you're do not it, required to do it no. no but i think what joe said earlier from the standpoint that if you let a contract for a building for example that contract is not going to let you spread those payments out of the city right you got to, right you, you got to pay you got to be able to pay for it all and the, the, uh, the new radio system for example yeah that's a fixed cost. cost yeah it's a fixed cost it's it's going to have to be paid when that when that radio system is put in place so those expenditures are going to come at one time um, the difference with, with such as roads is that what we're going to have to look at is, is from the standpoint of not as huge as an analogy let's just say we thought we were going to have four million dollars a year that we we're going to be able to use for roads with the projections what i'm seeing here basically we're going to have three million dollars so we're going to have to scale down what we were hoping to be able to get done because we're going to have to do it as the revenue was being 
hundred plus six for your check for the hundred or eighty-two. That was actually conservative. Of the numbers that were being thrown around, ours was the most conservative. Correct. Then very quickly we began to see, as Harrison said, in that second year, we're closer to 150. And so the projection of 150 for seven was based on where we were. We had a track record to look at. But when these changes came about that Harrison has already alluded to, that's changed to the end. So y'all all are aware of the philosophy that we have that we underestimate our revenue on purpose. <laughs> and we try to overestimate our expenditures to some degree so that we try to come in at least a conservative approach to it. Also, Joe, is it fair to say that um, just because we're receiving the funds here, we don't have to immediately spend them. We can delay, say, six months or a year. Uh, you know, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, and, that, they can then start. and that is the concept that the only my projection out each month of work is I'm building a nest egg and then having large amounts go out, but building that in a nest egg first. And if I get to a month where everybody says, we all want to do our stuff here, and say, well, you're going to have to buy some cash because you just important spend it all. <laughs> because the, the concept or the perception of the public is slots that pass, the money's coming in to let us start seeing the projects that we were promised. Well, okay, we need to be able to do that and we need to put those forward. Um, but we have to do it very cautiously. If what, we, what we've done like the, the parks and rec, under SPLOS 6, we anticipated far more revenue uh, for that project. And now we are, what, 70, 60 percent of that? Something yeah. else. So, uh, <coughs> and now we, we still have put any money towards that. We're about to change and uh, work on that with. So, we can slow some of these projects down just like we did with money to South Georgia Metro Center related to the parking deck. So that number was way less uh, because every time it kept in, as y'all know, the number was lower and lower and lower. And, uh, I think we did $700,000 to check out the last week. Um, I think are there, are there any conversations or have we looked at doing a bond issue for splash projects based on that present value and that present cost versus mm -hmm. waiting for the six year period? Uh, e I, and even looking at doing a conservative bond. Yeah, typically you have to put the bond in the referendum if you want to do it. There are some lending options um, that might become available, um, but quite frankly, with as tight as this is, you need to be patient. And I've had to tell another county this, that they didn't need to go borrow money and add to the cost and take that out of the money they already had. They needed to just be patient and let that money build up. And it worked for them. It probably saved them two or three hundred thousand dollars. So that's money you need. We're at, we're at a point, I understand the time value of money and all that. But, um, you know, debt issuance is, is expensive. And, and then, then you're saddled, you like we were the last with the debt payment, and the, and the revenues are going down and they can't meet the debt payment. You really have a problem. Well, I mean, if, if we looked at a bond, I wouldn't, you know, if yeah, you're, you're projected 52, I'm thinking 40. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, yeah. and they wouldn't allow you to do that in any, they wouldn't allow you to do something less. But, Right now, there was nothing in the referendum about any bond issue. Excellent. I mean, it was we, just a conversation right. that I thought we ought to have. We are using, this will help, we are using, we've done one Jeep alone, or y'all approved one Jeep alone in the sewer. We may use that again as projects develop and we need to put off using, like using a splash money, but we use the splash money to pay back the Jeep alone. 
that's a possibility is very cheap money and uh, that may be something we do to help the cash flow. Okay. We have had conversations with uh, the bond and the factors and uh, their conversation to us last month was that they did not think that the market rate was such a big benefit at this point. So we'll continue to keep those conversations going to see if there comes a time in this process. And it can only be from certain things, just like we did in the bond I mean, that's, that's fine. I just want to make sure that, you know, was about, you know, was at least conversational discussion if we needed to look at that. Because, I, I, I mean, I agree that this boss was passed and the public's going to say, hey, where are we going? <clears throat> that's a real upon us to be good communicators to the public. That right. Today, that we can only do what money we have coming in. Right. If it's down, it's down, and we'll do what best we can. Yeah. That's to my point. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I agree. Got to let them understand. Anything else? Here. I'm going to turn to the 